This is the Monoprice Maker Ultimate. The Maker Ultimate is a Cartesian style 3D printer that comes with a couple of different badgings. The most popular being the Wan Hao Duplicator 6. It has a 200 by 200 by 175 millimeter build volume. It does come with a heated bed, a direct drive extruder, a motion system that resembles a very popular other 3D printer manufacturer. It does have part cooling, although it doesn't work very well. And the best feature is this extremely rugged steel frame. Now at one time, these did come with a very high price tag, somewhere around $900 US. But recently, I've seen these recertified for less than 400 bucks. Now it probably doesn't make a lot of sense for me to review this machine, but I do want to show you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and what my use case for this machine will be in 2019. So let's get started with the things I like about this printer. So the first thing that attracted me to this machine was its construction, and it already has holes drilled and tapped so that you can add an enclosure. But seriously, this thing is so well made that you could toss it off the roof and it probably wouldn't hurt it much at all. They do use genuine Gates belts on this machine. It has a ball lead screw. That's something you don't see very often, and that's pretty high end. I do like that. And here's a look at the motion system. This is what I like to call the cross style motion system, and it could be a really fast one if you got it set up right. Just saying. It does have a heated bed. The build volume's kind of small at 200, 200, 175, but it does have the drop down bed, which makes time lapsing pretty cool. It has LEDs to light up the inside of the frame, which is nice. It is a 24 volt system. And let me show you my very favorite thing about this printer. It totally has brick breaker built right in. And the things I don't like about this machine, let's go ahead and stick with the LCD screen. It has the click wheel. It's not very helpful. There's not a whole lot of menu options in here. This is some sort of proprietary firmware. Not sure where they got it from. It does have the full size SD card reader. I don't typically use the SD because this menu is kind of hard to use, but it does work really well with Octoprint. And here's a look at the part fan setup on this. They completely missed the mark on this one. It has a 40 millimeter fan on top of this, and it's trying to direct the air underneath the nozzle. It's actually pushing it straight down, and there's not much air that comes out of here at all. And there are three 40 millimeter fans, one for a heat sink for the hot end right here, a part cooler, and one in the base and they are all extremely noisy, very irritating. The nozzle is the Mark 10 type that has a PTFE tube that runs all the way to the tip. This is not my favorite setup. It is pretty prone to jamming, and I've had this one taken apart several times. And while we're talking about the extruder on this machine, this is a great place for me to show you one of the most fantastic fails that I've ever had on a 3D printer. And here it is. So I guess one of the times when I was clearing the jam from the hot end, I didn't get the nozzle torqued down good enough, and it fell out mid-print while I was printing this Benchy, and just started dumping whole pieces of melted filament on top of the model, not extruding it at all. Pretty impressive, I have to say. And along the same lines, the extruder setup on this is probably my least favorite thing about the printer. The filament path starts here and runs all the way down to the hot end. There's a lot of room in here for things to go wrong. Again, I've had this whole thing apart several times, and the first time I had to take this cover off, I actually had to drill these screws out because they were so stripped. So I removed all the screws and replaced them with some M3 screws that do hold a lot better. So here's a look at the top of the extruder. It has a ribbon cable that runs down the back and underneath the machine to connect everything up. And it's a patch panel that you put all your fans, your hot end, your thermistor on. And this cable does like to wiggle loose, so occasionally you'll get a heater error out of the blue for no reason. So a definite rework of this is needed. One thing I did find kind of annoying was this screw right here. That's what triggers your Z end stop. It's just threaded into the metal and it'll dance around in there and make your Z very inconsistent from print to print. I have two nylock nuts, one on the top and one on the bottom, securing it so it doesn't do that any longer. Just not a very good design. And here's a look at what's underneath the machine at all the guts. They do use a 24 volt mean well power supply. That's a good sign. They have a proprietary board with their ribbon plugs that they use to go out to different parts of the printer. They also have a proprietary LCD screen that's used on this machine. Again, not gonna make any assumptions about what firmware they're using on this, but it is definitely proprietary and not open source. One big thing I did notice about the stepper drivers on this, they are not adjustable. No potentiometers to adjust any of the voltages. So not the most user-friendly design. 
And just to give you an idea of how annoying these fans are, I'm going to go ahead and plug this one back in for you. Sounds good, huh? So there's a look at the printer and some of the experiences that I've had while I was testing this machine, but how does it print? And some days it'd print really well. It seemed to really depend on the type of filament that you were using and how much part cooling or what the heat settings might be for that filament. So let's take a look at a few. So this owl is probably a pretty good representation of what you can expect if you have everything tuned in for your filament. It looks pretty good. It's a little fuzzy because of the part cooling. If you take a look at the back, you can see some striping that was introduced both by the ball screw and the stepper driver that's being used. But all in all, not a bad print. And then I went with the same owl, only he has kind of a lattice body. And you can definitely see where the part cooling comes in. Same filament as that last one. It's just really stringy. In all fairness, this is a pretty hard test for a lot of 3D printers. And here's the piggy banks that I tried. You can see this one has a lot of missed layers. It just didn't like this particular brand of filament. I believe this was inland. It'd probably been setting around a little while, so that might be what some of the issues were. But then I switched to some Filament Friday that usually prints at a little cooler temperature anyway, and it came out so much better. So again, the printer's somewhat unpredictable based on the brand and type of filament that you're using. My vase mode prints came out well, no issues there. And I'm not really sure why or the chemical makeup, but this printer really likes protopasta filament. This is High 5 Blue, and I'm sure the filament hides some of the imperfections, but this thing came out amazing. A lot better than I would have thought on this machine. And probably one of the best prints that I've actually ever done came from this printer. This is High 5 Blue protopasta again, but this thing looks really good. Very few errors, very little noise. So you can get a nice 3D print off of this printer, as fiddly as it might seem. But even at its lower price tag, sub $400 if you could find one, in this day and age with all the kits that are out there, it's probably not worth the money. The thing I do like most about the printer is its construction and how easy it is to make this an enclosure. And that's what I intend to do going forward. Also, the motion system should allow you to print pretty fast if you get it set up just right. So high temp plastic is going to be the future for this machine and what I bought it for. So more to come on that one. But would I tell you to go out and buy one of these as your go-to machine, something you print on every day? No, it's just too frustrating. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.